in the last stream we were working on setting up and automating our infinity minor tier one and tier two to automatically produce almost all of the ores that we are currently processing we also worked on setting up a distillation tower and an oil pump that's all the way over in the distance there so that we can start working on progressing through the next chapter of the quest line here towards the next tier of research that being the chemical research and between streams all i've done is set up a new and i guess final line of all processing over here for nickel and eventually for tin so this is exactly the same as before we've got the drawer up here we've got the exporters we've got the uh, inventory reader and the redstone writer to stop the crusher from spewing items everywhere it's all the same stuff as we did a few episodes back and what i want to work on in today's episode is pushing forward with this plastic production and moving closer to chemical research in order to do that as we saw in the last episode we are going to have to unlock the research for oil processing for that we need 64x logistics 16 lots of them we also need 64 lots of 8x mechanics we're about 102 lots of 8x mechanics now which is very nice indeed we also need some 8x production research we only need 16 that's fine we've got uh, 27 and then we need 32 utility research and we've got 312 perfect so now we should be able to start processing oil via the distillation tower and via the fractionating still so over here we should be able to actually make the fractionating still now thankfully it doesn't look too difficult to make between streams i did request a few more machine frames be made because we had to make uh, these new machines here and so i think we do have a couple of machine frames lying around in the system we totally do we just need to make a nickel gear two constantan gears and i think that's basically everything apart from i guess one redstone reception coil for us to make our first fractionating still nice so the next quest here wants us to make nether and you'll see there's no like actual hand in for that it's just a um a tick box quest naphtha is made in the distillation tower with crude oil now i'm uh, not entirely certain how the tower works my assumption is that we're going to pump in the fluid probably through this port here because uh, for immersive engineering blue usually means input this side right here i assume is for the power we do have a few spare omnidirectional connectors here as per usual we do want to uh, keep at least one of those available so we can duplicate the channel in the future but uh, for now we can do something like this something like this and something like this to get that power online never mind i'm a complete fool of course as is normally the case with the machines from immersive engineering the power goes in on the top so i need to get rid of this and it's actually over here like that which is fine i assume this then is probably the output slot for all of the uh, fluids that we're going to get such as the naphtha so let's throw you down let's make sure that is once again set up correctly and there we go power is going in perfect so last episode we did set up the oil mining and we did also put a fluid interface on there so i'm fairly certain that we should be able to get another fluid exporter and place that down on again what i assume is this uh, blue input slot from there we can just kind of run this up to here and if we have that bucket of crude oil that we got given in the last episode we should be able to use our portable logic programmer to specify that we want to export crude oil into this slot and then the final thing we have to do here is fix the fact that last episode i right clicked on this and i uh if you right click on this it uh, kind of inverts the redstone signal so it's always off uh, but you'll see it's working it's taking the crude oil and it's producing gasoline naphtha and lubricant i think it is uh, we do need another draw here that is completely fine let's get another frame draw and quickly go uh, color that to look like marble so we can put it here and begin catching all this bitumen i actually don't know if we need the bitumen we can use it to make asphalt concrete by the looks of it but uh, worst case scenario we can just put down a draw and then throw a void upgrade into it to delete any excess that we uh, we don't want if we want any of it at all that is it does look like it is using a lot of power although right now i think that's mostly due to the fact that the energy output here is currently kept at 1000 redstone flux so if i change this to like 5000 maybe 3000 i could set it to 5000 but i don't know if we have that much spare uh, but this is totally working and so now i think what we want to do is probably get a couple of tanks 
to start storing some of this stuff. So you can use these tanks from thermal expansion here. I think we used these earlier in the series. And uh, we can go one, two, and three. And then we can probably just use the fluid conduits here to extract from the tower. Like this, one, two, three. Uh, now, the trouble that we could run into here is, right now we could set these to extract. The trouble we could run into is what's happened here, where we've got lubricant in two of these tanks, when we actually want gasoline in one of these tanks, and there's no way to lock the tank to a specific fluid. And I think that probably means we might want to invest in unlocking these conduit filters. They're so cheap at this point in time that I feel like we might as well. Back at the beginning of the pack, I, I kind of refrained from unlocking them because I thought they were unnecessary. But I think at this point, we can probably just do this and this. It's a fairly easy unlock. And I think that should allow us to drop a filter into the input side of the tank that allows us to specify that we only want certain fluids going into that tank. For example, if we get a bucket and we take a bucket of the naphtha here, I think in the fluid filter, you can shift right click, you can put the naphtha in, it's set to whitelist by default, which is just allow. And then in here, we can put that like this. And now that should only allow naphtha to go in even if it, uh, it gets emptied out. So I think we'll do that with the rest of these. We are going to need a little bit more paper to make that happen. And for paper, I think we're currently using sawdust and water. Do I still have a reservoir? I do. I think this should work. It totally does. Fantastic. So, well, let's quickly make just two more of these. And we can uh, ideally dump the naphtha back in there. But I guess we've filled that bucket now. That's fine. I think we've got a stack of buckets in the system. So I will take one bucket of lubricant. Add that to one of these. Like so. Drop that in over here. Like that. And then finally, we want to move this lubricant out of here. Annoyingly, there's just less than, uh, than a bucket's worth. That's fine. If we set this to extract um, always active, that should pull the lubricant out of there and then start filling it with the gasoline. Perfect. And uh, just to be safe, we'll take this and we'll do the same thing again here with the gasoline. Whitelist and boom. And then the final, final piece of this setup, I think, is going to be to get a nullifier and use that to delete any excess. Oh, we don't have any tin. Tin is not coming through yet because of the fact that we're just processing all of our nickel over here currently into um, into ingots. It's only once we get through all of the nickel that we're actually going to start backing up on uh, and actually getting any tin out of here. All the tin is stored in here somewhere, but um, it might take a little while for that to come through, which is, is somewhat unfortunate. And uh, the problem is that we're also getting new nickel all the time, so this kind of keeps getting further and further backed up. Uh, the Twitch chat did suggest that it might not be a terrible idea to double up on the ore processing, because right now, especially with these three lines where we're making or trying to make two different ingots, we run into the same problem where the whole system kind of just gets bogged down on one type of resource. Uh, this one's just making platinum. This one over here is just making gold and this one's just making nickel. So it could be a good idea to just get another induction smelter, another pulverizer and another redstone furnace per line and then basically take the outputs from the crusher and divide them between two processing lines. Because I think the crusher is more than fast enough to make that happen. I think the slow part is the cinnabar. So over here, we have the gelid cryothium, but we are not making the slag fast enough. And so real quick, let's see if we can't get a regular old hardened upgrade kit here. We definitely can. And then we should also have everything we need to make another one of these reinforced upgrade kits as well. And if we do this and this, and then I assume we can take it one step further actually and grab a couple of these augments as well. In fact, we might have a few in the system. We totally do. Let me do one, two, uh, three, and four. Nice. That should start making the slag faster and hopefully, ideally, fast enough to uh, to keep this whole system going a little bit quicker. But uh, we should definitely look at, um, at setting this up in such a way that we do actually have a second processing line so we can process both the nickel and the tin at the same time. Uh, let me go check. I assume that we're still backing up on creosote. Yeah, so we want to do the same thing we've done here, basically, with this nullifier. We're going to take the uh, the fluid pipes and just run them to the nullifier, but then we're going to set the priority of the fluid pipe that goes to the nullifier to lower than all the rest of them, right? So the priority on these is zero. We'll put a nullifier down, maybe somewhere over here, and we'll set the priority of that to, like, 50, and that way these will all fill up first, and then any excess that is uh, generated will be deleted. Of course, these right now only hold 20 buckets, 
But what we can do, if we make yet more of these hardened upgrade kits, is we can make them hold even more. If I can get uh, three hardened upgrade kits here, we can go boom, boom, boom. And these now all hold, I think, maybe close to 100 buckets worth. But of course, we can take it further. And uh, if I craft a couple of blocks of redstone here, we should be able to get uh, at least three of these and go boom, boom, boom. And now we can hold a lot of fluid inside of these tanks. And so there's just more of a buffer that we have before we start deleting any excess fluid. Either way, naphtha is being made. And so we need to take that naphtha and process it into ethylene. And it looks like we're going to do that via the salt mixer. So I'll bookmark the salt mixer because I think much like I showed in the last episode, we're working towards plastic. Now we've not unlocked plastic, which makes me think there must be a quest somewhere, much like earlier for aluminum. Yeah, right here under aluminum is the quest for plastic. And it looks kind of expensive, but I think we might actually have the research for it. Green, we have. Red, I think we have. Oh no, we need 64x8. So we're like 10 away from that, 11 away from that. That's okay. And then uh, 16 production, we almost have. Again, we're a little light on that. And then 8, 8x8 8 utility is a little pricey, but we've got 35. So we're actually completely fine on that front. So we're just waiting on these two, which shouldn't take too, too long. They're both coming in, I think, fairly reliably. So that should be completely fine. Um, we don't need that research just yet, though, because we can keep working through this line of machines before we get there. We can start making the liquid plastic before we turn it into an ingot. So for the salt mixer, we need steel, we need buckets, we need an electric motor, which is gold, steel, iron, and some copper solenoids. The copper solenoids are easy enough. Our system actually knows how to make them, but we are completely out of iron, which I think is a problem that has arisen because of the fact that we're not producing that slag fast enough. Or it looks like we are producing the slag fast enough now, but um, we're not turning it into cinnabar fast enough, I guess. And we're using the iron, like, obviously faster than we are... Um, producing it. So a few things we can do. We can, of course, make more of these augments here to start using that slag just a little bit faster. That is going to trickle down, though, into a problem with cryothium, I think. And I noticed between streams, we'd have a secondary problem with cryothium, and that is that over here, this pulverizer fills up with snowballs in the output slot, and that stops the uh, blizz powder from being made, which stops the whole system from working. Now, the Twitch chat did mention that we could use the nullification augment. And if we get the nullification augment, it does require a bucket of lava, which we can make from nether brick. And then, boom. We also need invar nuggets, which I think we should be able to do. So the idea with this is that it will destroy excess secondary outputs. So if I put this in here, it should just keep going. Yeah, so even though it's full on snowballs now, um, it's just going to keep making blaze powder and just delete any excess snowballs which is kind of perfect i think that's exactly what we want and then down here we do have space for one more of these of course we're not running at the max power anywhere i don't know how we're doing on power production i don't really have an idea of how that's working currently but what we could do is uh, if we do this and this we effectively remove the 500 rf particular limit on uh, oh no sorry not like that let me get rid of this we want to, uh, to do that down here, right? If I do this, that should hopefully increase the amount of power this can use to up to 1,000 because now it's got two connectors, one on each side for power. So that should make it a little faster. And hopefully that means that we're producing the uh, gelid cryothium fast enough to keep up over here. And then again, it's just a question of whether or not the slag's coming in quick enough. The slag is coming in fast enough, which is good. The rich slag's coming back. We're making enough of it at the other end, which is also good. Um, yeah, it's really just the gelid cryothium that is the limiting factor. I really don't think there's too much we can do about that outside of making more magma crucibles. Okay, so it looks like the activation of the distillation chamber also kind of triggered a bit of a power problem because I was just checking over here and the magma crucible wasn't getting its power and everything was was kind of stopping. So this is, is kind of working. We are getting iron again. It, it is still being used, of course, and we do need to fill up the buffers that were uh, emptied when we ran out of uh, iron for a second. I have temporarily turned the uh, power transfer rate on this down to just 30 redstone flux per tick. So this is going very, very slowly. And that's kind of fine for now, I think, uh, because we've got loads of nap, though. So let's see, I guess, if we do indeed have what it takes to make the salt mixer. Before I do make the salt mixer, ideally, I would like to get one more of these nullification chambers, though, simply because of the fact 
that the same problem that's affecting the gelid cryothium with the snowballs is also affecting our aerothium over here with nitre. This pulverizer makes nitre as a byproduct, and right now that nitre is going into here, but eventually when this fills up and this banks up, we're going to run into the same problem. So if we just put this nullifier in, that's kind of just preempting that problem, so it's hopefully not going to be a problem in the future. And once we get more power, we might look at getting uh, more magma crucibles to get the gelid cryothium coming in faster, because I think that's needed for the oil processing that we're currently trying to run. But let's take a look and see if we can't get this... Uh, the salt mixer. So uh, do I now have what it takes to make the solenoid? I do. Beautiful. Okay. That allows us to get the electric motor. And the only other thing we're missing is the machine chassis, which is a four lead, four aluminum, and a machine frame, all of which we have. Nice. The basic plating is easy enough. It's just lead and coal. I think we made that earlier in the series. This blends fluids together. So here, we're going to blend some fluids together into ethylene. And the ethylene, as I think we saw in the last episode, is hydrogen and naphtha. And the hydrogen, we are going to have to get via the use of an electrolyzer. The electrolyzer here doesn't look too difficult. Let's take a look, though. We need another one of these machine chassis. That is maybe the easiest part. We need more basic plating, which we don't have, but we should definitely be able to make. We've got lead now, so that is fine. And then other than that, we need one more set of copper solenoids. And then a flux electrum ingot, and two amplifier electron tubes. These are made with a lot of stuff we don't have, including steel rods, which we actually do have. We can make those. We need copper wire, which we don't have in our network, but we should have available over here in one of these sequential fabricators. If we steal that fast enough. And then the final thing is these vacuum tubes. These are made using the crafting components blueprint in the engineer's workbench with redstone, copper wire, nickel plates, and glass. So glass we have, copper wire we can steal, redstone we have, nickel we'd also have, and I'm fairly certain we can turn that into plates. We can, indeed, we'll take some of those. And then we just need to steal, I guess, even more of the uh, the copper wire here and take that over to the engineer's work table to try and make some more of these electron tubes. I think these are made one at a time. Let's see though, boom, 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 boom. Um, oh no, they're not, they're made quite a few at a time actually. So uh, let's keep a few of these because we do need those for other things. I'll leave these in here for now just in case we need more in the uh, not so distant future. But uh, back over here, can I make two of these? One and two. I totally can. And boom, an electrolyzer. Nice. So let's take both of these back over to the distillation tower. And from my experience in the past, this is where we're going to need like a massive power upgrade. We are backing up on power again now, which is good ever since we turned this distillation tower off. But I've got a feeling that both of these machines are going to get very uh, expensive very quick, especially if we want them to work at any kind of reasonable speed. So I'm not quite sure how we're going to set this up yet. So temporarily, I'm going to put them down like here and here just because it's close to, uh, to power. So let's get two more energy exporters. That is going to require that we make a few more energy interfaces. Again, thankfully, we did bulk craft those batteries, and that is still paying dividends for us to this day. One and two. Boom and boom. All right. So both of these have power. I think we'll go ahead and make another aqueous accumulator because the aqueous accumulator is going to allow us to very easily generate unlimited water over here. Of course, we're light on iron, which is not ideal. And for now, we'll place that down probably just right on top of this, I think, and make sure the bottom is set to output. And that should allow us to start sending water into here. So the way the nuclear craft machines work, when you open them, they have a little side configuration button down here. They also store a lot of power. This thing can hold 38,400,000, which I think is 38 million redstone flux. So it can store a lot of power. But uh, for now, in here, we're going to go side configuration, and we're going to make sure that the input is at the top, which it is. So this is full of water. That's actually working just fine. And this should begin working to turn that water into hydrogen, oxygen, and a little bit of deuterium, I think, as well. And then we want to send that um, hydrogen over into the salt mixer, where we're going to combine it with the naphtha to make the ethylene, right? So we can take these quests here for ethylene and for liquid plastic, and then it's only once we um, unlock the next quest that we can actually start turning that liquid plastic into plastic ingots via the, uh, the fractionating still, which we already have. So I think this should be working. I think it might just be very, 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 very slow. It does take 4,000 redstone flux per tick, for this to work. Now, there are speed and energy upgrades here, 
which we have not unlocked, but we could unlock. Those are down here. These are unlockable. I don't know, though, if you can actually reduce the power consumption. I know you can put in speed upgrades to make the machine faster. And then I know you can put in energy upgrades to reduce the increase in power that comes from those speed upgrades. But I don't think that you can put in energy upgrades on their own to reduce the power usage, if that makes sense. So given that this takes 240 seconds at 4,000 hours per tick, that means that we need 19.2 million redstone flux in order to turn one bucket of water into some hydrogen, oxygen, and deuterium, which is not great. Uh, we can, of course, increase the power throughput here. But again, I think at this point, we're probably mostly just kind of running into a power deficit. I don't think we have the power to be doing that kind of stuff. You'll see here we're starting to, to really tank in terms of the amount of power that we have. To be fair, we could probably fairly easily duplicate this boiler set upon the other side and get a quick extra 10,000 redstone flux coming in. The only problem there is that um, these two machines alone will gobble up like half of that, which, um, which is not ideal. Back over here, we do now have enough research to actually unlock the plastic sheets, which is good. So we can do this and this. And so we have unlocked the plastic ingots now, which is, is a good step forward. However, it does look like power is really going to be our limiting factor here. Do we have enough to unlock the speed and energy upgrades for the nuclear craft machines? I think we do. 24x8 of logistics is, is very cheap. That's easy enough. 12x8 of the mechanics is also apparently completely fine. And then 24, just regular production, is one less than what we have. We've got 20 three do i have any in the system by any chance i do not um it probably shouldn't take too long for that to come in though uh, at which point we will have unlocked the uh, the speed and energy upgrades and with nuclear craft you can put in up to a stack of both speed and energy upgrades into any given machine to to really increase the speed at which it works and also try and mitigate the amount of power that it consumes at the same time i say that we're about to get one any second now but that's assuming that the aluminum is being produced oh it totally is yeah no, so we should get one any second now, it's going to come through in uh, in bulk, I imagine. There we go. Nice. Let's hand that in. Boom. And let's take a look real quick at the cost of the energy upgrades. For these, we need redstone, gold, and fluxed electrum. That's actually not bad at all. Obviously, if we want to make a lot of them, it's uh, it's quite expensive. But fluxed electrum we have being made, and we can kind of just steal that as when we need it. Redstone we've got in abundance. We can make a stack of blocks of redstone, and more will get made for us fairly quickly. Sometimes it does take a second when you craft with the... Uh, simple storage network that's fine and then let's make a couple of these weighted golden pressure plates because like i said before i'm fairly certain the way this works i don't think putting any of these energy upgrades in is going to do anything decreases the processing power of machines these upgrades can be stacked but the maximum number will always have an effect equal to the number of installed speed upgrades the power use will decrease linearly with each additional upgrade so we can put these in, but they're not going to do anything. All they do is they offset the power increase of using the speed upgrades. So right now it uses 4,000. I can put seven in. It still uses 4,000. Let's quickly look at the speed upgrades. These are not too bad either. They require aluminum and then uh, iron plates. We obviously don't have that much in terms of iron. But uh, if we made a couple of these over in here, if I were to put the speed upgrades in, now it uses 64,000 RF per tick with just three of them. And again, you can put up to 64 of these in to get just a staggering amount of power usage on this thing. But uh, if I put three of these in, 64,000, if I then add three of these, it goes down to 16,000, which is still a lot. And it doesn't go any down any further. It only goes down like to the same number. So if you've got three, three speed upgrades in, there's no point in having any more than three energy upgrades in because it doesn't do anything. Uh, but that's essentially how those work. Not that we need that just yet, because right now we don't have the power to even really run this at its current speed. It is getting close to hitting the 19 million that we need to actually get this started. But uh, yeah, these dynamos are completely out of fuel. Let's take a, a bucket of naphtha and let's drop that into the salt mixer. And then over in here, we want to set the output for the hydrogen to one of these sites. I don't think they can auto eject, unfortunately. Oh, there we go. We've hit the, the threshold. And so now it's going to work. Again, without any speed upgrades, this thing takes 240 seconds. So four whole minutes to process, which is really, really, really slow. Like really slow. And so it's going to take us a while to get that hydrogen there. And so I do think that if we're going to move forward here, you know, we need plastic plates. These are made. 
with plastic. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio there. Um, plastic is made with 200 millibuckets of fluid plastic. And how much fluid plastic do we get? Oh, it's the oxygen we need, not the hydrogen. I thought we needed the hydrogen. Either way, um, the oxygen and the ethylene. Oh, no, we need, we need hydrogen for the ethylene, right? That's where that's required. Yeah, naphtha and hydrogen gets you 500 millibuckets. And you don't even get 1,000 millibuckets from the water. You only get uh, 950, which is a real pain in the backside. So I think this is going to have to run twice in order to get us half a bucket worth of ethylene. That half a bucket of ethylene can then be used to not even get any plastic. That gets us halfway there to getting half a bucket of plastic, and then half a bucket of plastic gets two plastic ingots. And so you can see where we're going to run into some problems here, because if we're going to automate a lot of chemical research, we need the plastic frame, which requires plastic rods as well as plastic plates. There's a lot of plastic in here. So there's a big power overhaul that I think is going to be required. There is the chemical reactor here, which might just be a better way of making the ethylene. So I think I saw earlier that there's like um, two ways of making the ethylene. Yeah, there's a salt mixer, and then there's the uh, chemical reactor. The chemical reactor might just be faster, because I don't think either of these recipes are any better. 1,000 hours per tick for 800 ticks versus 1,000 hours per tick for 600 ticks. Maybe not. Maybe the chemical reactor is just straight up worse. I'm not too sure. Okay, so while we were waiting for the electrolyzer here to produce a somewhat decent amount of hydrogen, I went ahead and built a second boiler with 10 more steam dynamos. Currently, these only have the turbine conversion augment in them, so each one is only able to produce a maximum of 576 RF per tick, but that does mean that between the 10 of them, we have an extra almost 6,000 redstone flux per tick being produced, and so... This is really just kind of a stopgap solution. Obviously, at some point, we uh, we can add the other augments. Right now, we're just a little low on silver, which is why we can't do that at the minute. But um, with even with all these, that's going to take us up to 20,000 redstone flux per tick. But like I said, I really think this is a stopgap solution because of the fact that the nuclear craft machines just use such crazy high amounts of power. I think uh, maybe next time we're going to have to come back and look at uh, potentially getting some compression dynamos up and running to really increase our power output by uh, taking the oil, refining it, and then burning it in one of these compression dynamos to produce a large amount of, um, of power. For now, though, over here, we have hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen is what we need in here to make the ethylene, right? So in here, I'm going to say that the output tank for oxygen, which is this bottom left one, I'm going to say that that should output to the front, and I'm just going to make sure that all the rest of these don't output to the front, like that. Then what we should be able to do is take a fluid pipe and run that from here round to here. If we set this to extract always active, this is already set to insert. The oxygen and the naphtha are now in here. And so this should use 1000 redstone flux per tick to start processing the oxygen and the naphtha into ethylene. Never mind, I keep getting this wrong. It's naphtha and hydrogen is what we need. Now, annoyingly, I don't know if I can extract from this input tank, which is a real pain in the backside. It's the I need to combine the oxygen with the ethylene in the salt mixer to make the plastic. So, okay, I'm going to clear the naphtha. We're going to delete that. We'll leave that oxygen in there, and we'll make another salt mixer real quick to make the ethylene in. It shouldn't be too difficult. We can make more basic plating. That's fine. We can make another one of these uh, machine casings. For that, we are going to need the machine frame, and for that, of course, we need yet more of these steel mechanical components, which I guess we're going to go and request our system make for us because trying to make them in our inventory is uh, a little bit inefficient and also apparently not particularly possible at the moment so uh, back over here let's just do you next and start while we wait for that let's also get this electric motor up and running we just need one more craft of the copper solenoids boom and boom and boom there is our machine chassis and boom our second salt mixer so let's not mess it up this time this time we'll put this down i guess for now next to the electrolytic separator like this uh, we'll go ahead and make sure that it gets an energy exporter as well. And once that's getting power, let's take another bucket to move some of the naphtha over. Like this. And then let's disconnect this and move it over to here. So we're going to change this. We're going to say that the oxygen doesn't output to the front. We're going to say that the hydrogen outputs to the front because it's hydrogen that we want, not oxygen. And then we're going to do this. That should move the hydrogen over. It does. And now we should see the naphtha 
and the hydrogen processing together to make the ethylene. We can then take the ethylene out of here, I assume with a bucket, and then move it over into this salt mixer. Worst case scenario, we might have to run like a janky cable like this that goes kind of around and into this salt mixer. That would work, but it, it wouldn't be uh, ideal. We do, of course, need uh, one bucket's worth of ethylene before we can move it. That's fine. We can move another bucket of naphtha over. And we do, thankfully, have enough hydrogen to make this work. And once we have that, that's going to get us, I think, is it half a bucket worth of liquid plastic? It is. And then we can use the ingot former or the fractionating still to, uh, to make the plastic ingot. We, uh, we have a fractionating still. We made one earlier in the episode. And so I assume that this is probably the machine that we're going to go with. We'll take that and we'll put it down, I guess, for now, right about here. And of course, as per usual, make sure that it has an energy export so that it gets some power. Connect that up with cables and you get it. Put the uh, variable card in. Good stuff. Let's get rid of that real quick. And I unfortunately don't think I have my integrated dynamics wrench on me. Otherwise, that would have been a lot faster. Either way, in here, we have one bucket of ethylene. Let's take that out. Nice. Let's put that in here. Again, that's going to process into the half bucket of plastic. Again, we would need a full bucket if we want to move it over. I guess what we could do though, and I've kind of put this in the wrong place, but I guess if we do this here, and if I move the energy connector, let me get my wrench back out real quick. If we move that energy connector, the fractionating still is able to auto pull. And so if we do this and this, and then in here, we make sure that the top is set to output, which it is. And then in here, we can set the bottom to input and turn auto input on. Never mind, auto input does not work. That is fine. In that case, let's take this, make sure that the left side is set to output. And then let's just do one of these. I don't want it to connect here is the thing. So I'm going to temporarily, I'm going to temporarily disconnect this from extracting. That way I can do this without this filling up with naphtha which is not what we want then we can disconnect that here place this here re-enable the extract there and then over here we can set this to extract always active set this to insert and make sure that it can receive on the left hand side and there we go we have two plastic ingots nice okay so that's the general premise obviously this is like a very rough setup we're going to need to move these machines and set up the automation in such a way that all of this works without us having to um to fiddle with this there are options here that make this easier. For example, uh, in here, we don't need the uh, deuterium. You can turn the uh, tank settings to void excess, and that means that when it fills up with deuterium, it's just going to delete any leftover deuterium so we don't end up backing up on deuterium, which is good. And we can do that with all of these to make sure that none of this backs up. And we can kind of see how we're going to get towards plastic automation here. But before we can automate plastic ingots, I think we're going to need a massive increase in power so that we can get these machines to a, a reasonable speed so that we can make the uh, chemical research at more than, you know, one research every th four days. So that's going to be a problem for future Isaac. Over here, the ore processing problem is one that I think we can uh, we can try and help a little bit. So annoyingly, it looks like jelly cryothium is our current issue, which is surprising because I would have thought that we'd be doing all right on jelly cryothium, although it looks like the snowballs here are the limiting factor. We're just, I guess, not producing the pristine matter fast enough. Let me make sure I did set this to round robin. I did. And uh, both of these are set to insert. So it should be working. Temporarily, we can give it a kickstart by, again, stealing some pristine matter from over here. And that will, uh, will keep the whole system chugging along for a little while longer. The problem that uh, I think we are kind of having, though, is one of lava production. Right now, we're not having that problem. But a second ago, when I was building the boiler, I noticed that we were full upon cryothium. We just weren't making the slag into rich slag fast enough. And that's just because this magma crucible wasn't making the lava quick enough. So there are a few options here. We could purchase the next tier of thermal expansion upgrade, which would allow us to make the magma crucible even faster. But I think that's just going to exacerbate the fact that we don't have enough power already to power like our new machines. And so something the Twitch chat has pointed out is that there is an alternative way of making lava by using magma blocks. And uh, if we can take these magma blocks, we can put them into the magma crucible and it's the same as with the cobblestone, but instead of taking 300,000 redstone flux to produce one bucket of lava, it only takes 40,000. And so the effect is that the magma crucible isn't going to use any less power. It's just going to be faster at producing the lava. So we're going to get rid of this bottleneck. Magma blocks can be made by 
either putting lava into a mechanical dwang basin, which might actually be the better way of doing this, or by crafting magma creams. We do have slime balls, but we don't have blaze powder yet. We could get blaze powder um, either via this craft here with the uh, hellish matter and gunpowder because we can get gunpowder from the zombie matter, or we could get the uh, blaze powder from blaze rods because we can get blaze rods from the uh, blaze data model. But the mechanical basin might not be a terrible idea here. Let me quickly see if we have what it takes to make the mechanical basin. And then I guess the real question is just going to be whether or not the uh, mechanical basin is kind of fast enough to make any of this work. I think that the answer is going to be that it's probably not fast enough on its own. But if we get a few of these, we might be able to make it work. I guess the trouble then, though, is that um, we still need to make lava, right? So I guess that doesn't really work, actually, now that I think about it. Because this requires lava, and the whole point is that we're making lava. So that's kind of a circular setup. So never mind. We are going to have to use the magma creams here with the slime balls and the blaze powder. This should be fine, because it should just be a case of getting another blank data model and putting that into one of these workbenches in the right slot. If we can find the right slot for blaze rods, which apparently is bottom right, we can then utilize one of our spare machines. I'll use this one here for making blaze matter. All right, so this is fully set up. We have our blaze data model, which is only gonna get better over time, producing the hellish matter and the pristine blaze matter as well. Uh, you can either turn the pristine matter into blaze rods or sulfur powder, uh, we're using blaze rods of course and that is connected up to the system whilst we were waiting for our first blaze rods to come in over here we told the pulverizer that it can turn one blaze rod into four blaze powder and then over here i taught these crafting tables how to turn blaze powder and slime balls into magma creams and then how to turn magma creams into magma blocks and so as we've done a few times before now we should be able to kind of get rid of this and drop down another item exporter with obviously crafting set to enabled to export the magma blocks. Make sure that's a, an exporter, not an importer, Isaac. So if we do that there, and if we get our card, let's, I guess, first of all, do we have any magma creams? We don't, that's fine. Uh, let me go ahead and craft a blaze rod down, craft that with a slime ball or two. And I guess we have to do this twice, right? And I should probably be trying to save my blaze rods a little bit. We don't have that many of them at the minute. Let me run that through a pulverizer instead of crafting it in my inventory. We'll put that in there. I uh, could definitely do with maybe making that pulverizer a little bit faster as well. But once we have a few more blaze powder, we could do this. We can do this. And then in here, we can then specify a new card that is set for item. Magma block. Boom. And if we were to put that into this item exporter, like so. That should start exporting blocks of magma, and you'll see it's a lot faster than the cobblestone. The question is whether or not we're gonna be able to produce those um, magma blocks fast enough. I think there's a possibility that right now we might not be able to, but I'm hoping that going, oh, of course, I need to make sure that it's set to actually craft that's my bad let me do this to true i think it's possible that right now we might not be producing them fast enough but i think that once we get the uh, the data model over here up to like self-aware i think we'll be making more than enough blaze rods to uh to keep this going and in fact maybe already you know the um the blaze rods are coming in quite quickly let's see over here do we have any magma blocks being sent over we do. Nice. Okay, so it's being sent over. Um, it jumped from 2,000 to 3,000 there, 3,000 to 3,500. Really, so long as the lava in here is not falling, like so long as the amount of lava in here isn't falling um, actively, then we should be okay. Yeah, this seems okay. It's running quite well. And so now the problem is jellied cryothium again. And I think that might, again, just be back down to the, the magma crucible. It is. The magma crucible is just not fast enough to keep up with it. We do have more power now. And so I guess we can get another Magma Crucible down, and I kind of feel like we don't really have much of a choice but to do that, simply due to the fact that um, we need the uh, ore processing. We, we could try and turn off some ore processing to, um, to save on power, maybe, if we, uh, if we wanted to, but we need iron, right? Without iron, everything is going gonna, is gonna to fall apart, and so if we want to get iron back online, we need more jelly cryothium, which means we need at least one more Magma Crucible. All right, so one extra Magma Crucible later... All I've done here is I've moved the first one out to the side. I've added an item conduit from the bottom of the sequential fabricator so that we can distribute the cryothium dust to both magma crucibles. And then I've upgraded the uh, second one here with 
all the same augments and all the same upgrade kits so that we can do something like this and get them both hooked up to the system. So all of that jelly cryothium is being pulled out. Of course, we'll get some conduit facades to cover that up in the future, but hopefully now the cryothium is no longer the limiting factor in the production of cinnabar. And even more hopefully, we kind of keep this full of cinnabar going forward. We've done basically like all of the upgrading that we can. Uh, we've upgraded the induction smelter here to make slag faster, and we are backing up on slag, which is good. We haven't upgraded the mango crucible here, but it's got the augment in it. We could put more speed upgrades in to take the power usage even higher, but I don't think that's necessary. We just need to make sure that we're getting the magma uh, blocks in fast enough. Uh, let me check over here. Are we actually out of blaze rods? We are out of blaze rods. Again, um, all we can really do there is just kind of let this cycle until we have a good amount of them, which hopefully won't take too, too long. I guess, like, in the meantime, I can kind of throw a cobblestone in as well. It's just so much slower is the problem. It looks like we are, even right now, producing the cinnabar fast enough to kind of back up, even with the slower lava production. It looks like things are kind of trending in the right direction, which is good. And so, yeah, I'm quite happy with this. Um, hopefully this cobblestone here, this stack of cobblestone I'll put in, will kind of give the blaze chest time to, to back up. We'll get enough blaze rods that we can then start processing into magma blocks. And, you know, eventually when it gets self-aware, I think we'll be producing enough of them to keep it going indefinitely. But now, hopefully, we are backing up on iron again, which is good. This is what we wanted to see. We are slowly but surely backing up on iron. We do have another problem, though. Um, we've got a few problems, of course. But coal coke is a problem. We don't need too much of it for our boilers because the boilers are very efficient at what they do. But I think since we increased the steel production... We've been losing coal coke because we are fresh out. Like all of these are working full time and we do not have any coal coke. So between streams, it's it's a fixable problem. Between streams, I'm probably just gonna make even more coke ovens and just line them up further this way. Thankfully, they're a little easy to set up now because we no longer need one fluid pump per coke oven. I can just use the uh, the fluid conduits. So we could probably kind of get rid of most of these uh, fluid pumps and maybe reuse them for uh, something else. I should have thought of that earlier because I had to craft a lot of fluid pumps when uh, setting up the second boiler over there. But, uh, but yeah, between streams, I'll set up even more coke ovens so we can start making uh, even more coal coke. And uh, hopefully that will be enough to keep our blast furnaces happy and, of course, keep our steam power online. And speaking of power, I think next time we'll come back and we'll take a look at upgrading our power situation, maybe looking at using oil in a compression dynamo. I think we can turn the oil into refined fuel to make it even more efficient and, and really start to pump out some serious power, at least until we can get uh, to something like the fission reactor from nuclear craft which does require 32 chemical research so again a little ways away yet but uh, we'll upgrade power and then we'll look at uh, upgrading and automating the production of plastic as well as automating the production of pyrothium dust which requires blaze powder anyway so we are going to have to use that blaze that we just set up along with some advanced du plating which doesn't seem too bad but again is even more plastic so we really are going to need a lot of power to get that plastic coming in at a decent pace but as always, that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Feed the Factory there.